doors are open, the rivers make way, and the valleys make plain. to welcome all of us to our service this morning. The Lord is good. Praise the Lord. Now I want to answer a question today. Who is a liar? There's a time we discussed and we asked a question. Who is a poor man? According to the biblical standards, who is a poor man? So today we want to look at who is a liar. The definition of lying, the definition of lying is one who is not speaking the
the truth. All right. One who is not speaking the truth. Now, what is truth? What people say is the truth is not. And we'll see from scripture. What people consider to be truth on earth is not. Many people think that for instance, to say this is green and this is blue because it looks blue, that's truthful. Well, the fact of the matter is it is blue because of the reflection of light on it. If you change the light on which you reflect on a particular material, the color will change. Praise the Lord. So based on the light reflected on a particular material, the color will be a particular color. But whatever is seen is subject to change. So what people say is truth is not truth, is facts. Facts change. Truth does not. Praise the Lord. So pastor, what is truth? Truth is the word of God. There is no other truth on earth, in heaven, outside the word of God. So if it is not the word of God, it's not truthful. Therefore, it can determine how you react. To it. If it is not from the word of God, it's not truthful. So it's not supposed to affect your sensory organs. Many times, many people react in a particular manner to some things when they receive particular news, they will react in a particular manner. And sometimes the question is, is that what the Bible tells you? If it is not what the Bible says, you ought not to react that way. Praise the Lord. Let me give you an example. You go to a doctor. Tobias, you go to a doctor and you sit before the doctor and the doctor delivers news to you. They tell you this is what is happening to your system. Then you leave that place sunken. Your shoulders gone in. Your head and your neck inside your shoulders. So you're walking like this. Very sad. So when you meet with other people and they're like, what is wrong with you? I tell you, I've received some bad news from the doctor. Or you go to your bank account. You are expecting something. And you go and check your balance. And it shows you it was where it was yesterday. Then you come back off. Oh, my day is finished. It has changed the way you are 
relating with people at that particular moment. Whatever you have received, the world will tell you it is the truth about your bank account. The question is, is it? The world will tell you is the truth about your health. The question is, is it? So you have to ask a simple question. Who am I? Who are you? Once you answer that question, you have answers to that question. The other question of whether whatever you have seen is truthful or is it factual? Facts change. Truth does not. Truth is constant. Praise the Lord. Truth is constant. Facts change. It is a fact that your bank account is saying what it's saying. But that's subject to change. It's a fact that your doctor has said your health is the way he says it is. But that's factual. It's not the truth. Who are you? At the point of birth, you were, you were born anew. And you were born in a kingdom. It's called the kingdom of God. So you live. You exist on earth. As a representative of this kingdom. So you were born in the kingdom of God. By the power of the Holy Spirit. And by the power of the Holy Spirit. You have been quickened to exist on earth. As a representative of this kingdom. So you are here as a man on a mission. Praise the Lord. You are here as a man on a mission. You have business to take care of. There's work you ought to do. Praise the Lord. Now, when we understand When we understand this, then we begin to live. Praise the Lord. Once we understand that I'm here as a man on a mission, we begin to live. Let me show you something. The Apostle Paul says something so powerful. He says, we, we are in the world. But we are not of the world. Praise the Lord. We are in the world. But we are not of the world. This is powerful. This is extraordinary. How can we be in the world? But not of the world. It means... We do not belong to the world system. We don't belong to the way the world operates. We don't belong to the mannerism of the world. Hallelujah. We live in the world, yes. But our mannerism is of the kingdom. Our way of life is of the kingdom. Because that's the truth. That's where we exist from. We exist from. Praise the Lord. Let me show you something. Go with me to the book of 1 John. 
Hallelujah. First John chapter 5, verse 10. We'll read a number of scriptures today. First John chapter 5 and verse 10. Hallelujah. The Bible says, He that believeth on the Son of God hath thou witness in himself that believeth Sorry, as the witness in himself. Then it continues, he that believeth not, God has made him a liar. So how many liars do we have in the society today? I was somewhere the other day and we were discussing the question of corruption in the country. And I told the, 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 the brethren that we were together, whatever the solutions the country will put in place, they cannot be sufficient to deal with the question of cultured corruption in our country. I deliberately use the word cultured because it's become a culture. There are places you would go and nothing would happen until you give a bribe. You just drive or get into a matatu and pass by a roadblock. Put your eyes open. There's no policeman who is checking no vehicle. They just stop, they are given something and the car goes. They don't check no vehicle. They will pretend there that they are busy checking vehicle. They are not. Is an ATM center where cash is exchanging hands. I am yet to see a genuine roadblock in our country. One. Genuine one. One. I don't think if we do have what is the problem? Simple. They are of the world. The world is naturally corrupt. It is naturally wicked. In the world... Anybody who is of the world, that means they do not believe in the Son of God. They are not born again. They are naturally wicked. They are naturally incapable of doing good. So they are naturally incapable of escaping corruption. They cannot do without it. It's part and parcel of their system. They belong to that particular world. They hail from that world. It is their natural order. It's their natural order. When something is of your natural order, you can't do away with it. It's not possible. Because the ability for you to overcome what is of your natural order is in the other kingdom. Is in the opposite kingdom. So if you are of the kingdom of God, the ability for you to overcome what is of the natural order? What is of the other kingdom? The kingdom of this world. The kingdom of the enemy. Is of the spirit. Is in you. 
So it becomes easy for you to say no to corruption. Hallelujah. They normally say, oh, we have done purging in, in the judiciary. We don't have corrupt judges. No. It's not true. The most corrupt institution in any country is the judiciary. That's where corruption takes place. It begins there. Cases are won and lost on the scale of how much? In most countries. On the scale of how much? Why? Because the Christian community slept on the job. Why don't we have born again judges? Why don't we have Christian judges? It's because we go to a place and began to feel like Jesus is coming now. We don't need to go to school. We began to feel Jesus is coming now. We don't need to study and have managers in the banks, have, you know, high-ranking judges in the judiciary, have serious people, serious lawyers in, in the, in, on, the, on, on the bar. Good construction companies. Genuine uh, 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 insurance brokers. Genuine, you know, shares. You know, people that trade in shares. So we have many people that are hurting because someone who was of a corrupt kingdom behaved naturally. They behaved accordingly. So the Christian is complaining. But why are you complaining? What, ex what do you expect from a naturally corrupt individual at heart? What would I do? Perpetuate corruption. Become unjust. We failed at training Bringing up, encouraging, uplifting, causing men and women to be placed in the right places. So now we are paying the price. Our people are dying because they slept in a house that came down because of corruption. Construction rules were broken. Our people are crying because a land broker stole money from them and now they don't have money to build a house. Because nature took its course. Here is the good news. You can't be disadvantaged. Praise the Lord. So if you find yourself in that environment, just know you can't be, just tell yourself, I cannot be disadvantaged and I can't lose either. So God will somehow work something to get you out of it. But we don't want God to do, to do those, you know, puncher, you know, fixing punchers. We don't want God to fix punchers always. We want a complete change, a transformation, a healing to take place. How? Let's begin to train our young people to take up the right positions. So that in the future, if Christ tarries, the church will dominate properly. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 
So he says, he that believeth on the Son of God hath thou witness in himself. They have a witness in themselves. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar. So that person has made God a liar. He that does not believe has made God a liar. Let's continue. Because he believed not the record that God gave of his son. What is the record that God gave of his son? What's the record that God gave of his son? Next verse. He says, and this is the record that God hath given, that God hath given him hath given to us, sorry, eternal life. And this life is in his son. That's the record. The record is Jesus is a bearer of eternal life. He's the one that carried eternal life. It was in him. It was in him. Whoever needed eternal life needed to receive Jesus. In eternal life is corruption freedom. In eternal life is healing and wholeness. In eternal life is wealth and toads. So whoever is looking for these things, in eternal life is wisdom. Whoever is looking for these things must first receive Christ. Without Christ, there is no wisdom. There is no healing and wholeness. Without Christ, there is no peace. Without Christ, there is no freedom from corruption, freedom from the troubles of this world. They are all embedded in eternal life. Because eternal life is the life of God. Eternal life is the life of God. That which makes God, God. That is what is called eternal life. That life is in his son. Praise the Lord. So whoever has received the son hath this life. Hallelujah. And whoever has not received the son doesn't have that life. They don't have that life. If they do not have that life, they are incapable of doing good. They are incapable of being corrupt free. You know, there's some politics going on in our country. And people have praised some politicians so much. They have elevated them to the place of Jesus. And churches have closed their eyes. Nobody is praying anymore. According to them, they have found their perfect presidential candidate. Stop a minute. Stop for a while. Have you prayed? Have you prayed? Or are we going back to 2007? Have we forgotten so quickly? When we felt this is, is, the, this is the perfect presidential candidate. So this church in this region, this is the perfect presidential candidate. This church in this region, this is the perfect. Is God divided? How many presidential candidates does God have in one country? How many presidents exist in one country? We have even abrogated our role, our duty of praying for those that are in authority. We have become the chief campaigners. It's wickedness. That's not us. That's not us. That's not the body of Christ. 
That's not our responsibility. How are you going to be able to close your eyes and pray genuinely, objectively for the nation if you begin to see that the president is unfair to so and so? He's the one in authority. Are you the one in authority? Have you ever been in a president? Do you know what it means to balance power in a country? The Apostle Paul says, pray for those in authority. That's our responsibility. But the church has become a campaigner. It shall not happen. Praise the Lord. It shall not happen. You had better begun to pray. The Lord will show us who is going to be our leader. But it shall not happen the way the church is going about it now. You are creating a recipe for disaster. And that's not what God has called you to do. That's not what God has called us to do. We have a mandate to deliver the word of God. No politics. Praise the Lord. I had a meeting this week. I, was, I, was, I had gone to, to share in, 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 a, in a forum and I told them something and some of them were a bit amazed. I told them, I can't talk Corona. I can't talk the way you talk. If I talk the way you talk, when you have a problem, where will you go? And they stopped. I am the man of God. I'm speaking your language. If you have a problem, where will you run to? What confidence will arise in you to come to me for prayer, for counsel, for wisdom? So I told them, I can't talk the way you talk. I can't do the things you do. do the things you do with regards to this pandemic. I can't. I left that place. I went to a bank. And you know, you don't allow us to get in without uh, some things. I forgot those things in the car. So I go to the entrance. I got my hands. In that particular branch, your hands are cleaned by force. You don't do it yourself. So I had to have them cleaned by force. But there are things that were missing. So the gentleman told me, you don't have this. I said, oh, I didn't, I, I didn't remember I don't have it. It is well. They looked at me and said, they just shook their heads. I went, finished what I needed to finish, and came out. So when I was coming out, someone followed me. And they said, we will not admit you again if you don't have this. I looked at them. I said, I have heard you. I went out. Guess what? That same person met me outside. Now even them, they don't have what they were asking me to have. So I looked at them and smiled. Said, you gave me courage. I said, praise the Lord. It's important to understand our place as a church. 
It's important to understand our place as a church. If we do not understand our place as the church, we will not have solutions to the world. The world unknowingly has made God a liar because they have not believed in his son. Now if they have made God a liar because they have not believed in his son, what are we supposed to do? Show them the way. How are we going to show them the way when we speak like them? How? It's not going to be possible. Praise the Lord. He says, and this is the record that God has given to us eternal life. And this life is in his son. Everybody that has received Jesus as Lord and Savior, they have eternal life. They have that life that kills diseases. That life that stifles corruption. That life, you know, that brings peace. Even in the midst of turmoils, peace exists in your heart. That life. Every Christian has that life. That life has distinguished you from the rest of the world. It has made you unique. It has made you special. It has made you peculiar. You can think like the rest of the world. You can talk like them. You, you can walk like them. You can behave like them. You can't exist with a mindset like the world. You have to look at things differently from a different perspective. And it's not just once when you have a problem, then you change your perspective. After that, you go back to your old nature. No! It has to be a lifestyle. You have to awaken to the uniqueness, to the peculiarity of your life. The Apostle Peter says something. He says, you are a chosen generation. A royal priesthood. A peculiar people. Called of God. We, 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 we don't like using this word, but that's the truth about it. We are special. You can use that word for free from today. You are special. So your mindset ought to be different. How you look at things ought to be different. You look at them from the perspective of a kingdom. What, how is God looking at them? Pastor, how do I know how God looks at things? His word is the mirror. So if you want to know how God looks at a particular situation, go to the word of God. Find a scripture that talks about that particular situation. You will know how God looks at it. For instance, how does God look at sickness? He doesn't see it. To God, it does not exist. Why? Because he healed us. It's past tense. He performed that act of healing at Calvary already. Even before you were born again, you were healed. Even before you were born again, you were delivered. It's past tense. Colossians 1, 12 and 13. It's past tense. Your deliverance is past tense. Your healing is past tense. Your wisdom is past. According to God, he has already done it. So his perspective on those matters 
is that they are done deal. Finances, you have the money. You have the resources. You know, I was, I was talking to Laura yesterday, and she said, Pastor, I have a lot of money. <laughs> I said, praise the Lord. Then she said something. I said, no, you've got to change that part. <laughs> I said, you have to change that part. Why? Because financial provision is past tense according to God when it comes to a believer. Praise the Lord. All these things, they are in eternal life. They are embedded. They, they are encompassed, encompassed around eternal life. They are within eternal life. They are packages within the eternal life. When you receive the eternal life, you received everything you needed for life and for godliness. Praise the Lord. The other day, when we were releasing Minister Lydia to, to officially open up uh, Utawala, she came to my office and said to me, Pastor, we don't have a hall. I looked at her, what did you just say? You don't have what? She said, we don't have a place for worship. I said, it's, it's in you. Go produce it. Then she looked at me and said, oh. <laughs> she said, oh. I said, you are now realizing. She said, yes. She said, okay, go produce it. A few days later, she called, Pastor, we have three different venues. We'll use one this Sunday and see how good it is. Then we'll see about the others. So they used one. They didn't like it. So when you don't like it, what do you do? Pay, go to the next one. They went to the next one. They liked the next one. It was nice according to them. Where was it? In their spirits. Praise the Lord. So where is yours? In your spirit. First, first Sunday of September. We don't want to see you here. Praise the Lord. You go. If you go to do under a tree, at the bus station, whatever you do, don't come. <laughs> whatever you do, don't come here. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Very important. When you understand that. Okay, let's read the next verse. Let's read the next verse. My time is almost up. He says, he that hath the son hath life. This is the truth. So if we have Christ, we have life. What is life? Progress. What is life? Success. What is life? Mention what you want to see good. They are all in life. And what you are looking for a husband is in life. Tobias, you are looking for a wife. She is in life. Praise the Lord. Everything that we need, both for life, that means our existence on earth, and godliness, that means our responsibility, our execution of the responsibility, the God's responsibility upon us, kingdom assignments, they are all in life. And that life is what we have received. That's what is in us. No wonder every 
everywhere you go, good things happen. Everywhere you go, good things happen. We've been praying and praying and praying. Look, this road is being tarmacked. Have you seen the signpost? Showing that the works have been all, everything is set to begin. Why? We are bearers of life. I was telling, I was telling the, the, the people on Wednesday, I have never lost a phone. My phone being stolen by who? How? Where are the angels? What are they doing? They will answer. I'm not a thief. I give my tithe. So whatever God has given me must satisfy me. So it can't break, it can't be lost. Look at your phone. Is the screen speaking gloriously? Are you sure you typed last time you received money? When you tithe, preservation is yours. One of the most important benefits of tithing, you'll be preserved. Everything in your care will be preserved. Praise the Lord. I gave them, I gave them an example. One day, one of the, the, their director called me. I was in Gidurai, this place. I was walking to go and see someone. Then I, 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 I was still believing God for miracles of Akka. So he called me. And I walked for about 15 minutes talking on phone. Talking on phone. And everybody was looking at me strangely. One lady got the courage. She tapped me and said, your phone to be stolen. You don't know this is Kidurai. I said, so what? I, I told the guy, wait, my phone cannot be stolen, even if you tried now. And I continued talking. Preservation, protection is in life. So everything you are looking for is in Christ who is in you. So where is everything you're looking for? Yes, it's in you. Because it is in Christ. Where does Christ dwell? In you. So many times when we are going to pray and we are looking outwards, asking God from somewhere to answer those questions, I wish we changed and began to speak them forth because they are in us. Praise the Lord. They are in us. Look at verse 13. Ah. So, so verse 12 says, He that hath the Son has the life, and he that has not the Son has not the life. If there is no life in an individual, destruction is part and parcel of their life. And destruction is in many forms. Disease eating their system is destruction. Losing anything that is in your care easily is destruction. If you give me something today, even if it was not working, it will work. Praise the Lord. It will function. It will produce results. 
If you did not see use of it, it will find use in my life. Because there is a life at work in me. Praise the Lord. One time we moved into a house. It had been abandoned for years. I think for about 12 years. And there was nothing that was working. There were many stories about the house being uh, haunted. Minister Nanga found us in that house at the dam down there. He found us in that house. He used to come and visit on Sundays. That house was nice. But it had been abandoned and nobody wanted anything to do with it. When we moved in, all of a sudden, after about six months, everybody wanted to buy it. And the owner kept receiving these calls, these requests, this request, this request. He said to them, I never found value of this house until pastor came into it. After pastor leaves, I'm not selling. If I don't live in it, I'll rent it at a higher price. That's what he's doing now. He's making more money, I think, three times what he was charging us. He found value of something that was wasting away. Why? Life came into it. When we came here, this thing was hide and seek for Minister uh, Okay. <laughs> I used to play hide and seek here with Shiro. If they want to hide, they come and hide here. The place was not it wasn't admirable. Nobody wanted anything to do with it. It was a place where thieves had made a haven at night. But look at it now. Everybody wants to have a share of it. What happened to it? Life came to it. That's what your life ought to do. Praise the Lord. When you do not have Christ, value for what is of value will not exist. And even if you are given something nice, it will waste away in your hands. It will. Haven't you seen people? They get a phone in the morning. Three days later, it has a crack from top to bottom. Haven't you seen that? And it's an expensive phone. You wonder, what happened? Ah, it fell down. What happened? I don't know. I just picked it and boom, it fell down. Their hands are not steady because their hearts are not at peace. Their spirits are not calm waters. When your spirit is not calm waters, your hands will shake. You will not be able to hold anything steadily. Your mind will not be steady. So you can't think straight. The only people that can think straight even in the midst of trouble are believers. Why? Their spirits are calm waters. Hallelujah. Pastor, where did you get that? Well, let me give you a story then I'll close. One day, Jesus was ministering. And upon finishing, the Bible says he told his disciples, go to the other side. Then he got into a boat. They got into a boat. Let's go to the other side. They got into a boat. And midway the journey, the Bible says Jesus went to the lower deck and he slept. Then there was trouble at sea. The boat was being tossed to and fro by the troubled waters. The disciples panicked. They were not born again at that time. 
You know, people think that all the time Jesus was with the disciples, they were born again. They were not. Until Acts 2. That's a topic for another day. They were troubled. They began to throw cargo offshore. They began to get buckets and fetch water and throw away. Then they one of them discovered, where is the master? And he went to the lower deck. He found him asleep, deep asleep in a couch. He said, master, don't you care that we are about to perish? Don't you care? Jesus doesn't care. Who told you let's go to the other side? It's Jesus. You don't think he knew there was going to be trouble. When he said let's go to the other side, that was sure word that you were going to get there. But you couldn't trust him. So they lost cargo. They were terrified. I bet some of them had nightmares after that. Thinking we are going to perish. But Jesus was in the lower deck. Asleep. And the Bible says they woke him up. When he came, what did he do? The Bible says, he said, shush, be calm. Then they all marveled. What kind of a man is this? That he even speaks to the wind and it obeys him. Wait a minute. They were his disciples. They were his disciples. How could they marvel what kind of a man is this? It's because they were living in two different kingdoms. Hallelujah. They were living in two different kingdoms. The language of Jesus was not their language. Their thought pattern was not Jesus' thought pattern. Their possibilities were not Jesus' possibilities. Their facts were not Jesus' facts. Their truth about Everything was not the truth that existed in Christ. That's why he soberly was able to bring a solution to the problem. Praise the Lord. If you understand who you are, you will not talk like the world. Listen to this. He said, these things, this is John writing, he says, these things have I written unto you. That believe on the name of the Son of God. That you may know that you have eternal life. And that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. So I've written to you these things. Those that believe. So that you may know that you have eternal life. Why did they need to know? Because you cannot live in the reality of what you do not know. Praise the Lord. You cannot live in the reality of what you do not know. If something is unknown to you, you can't live in its truthfulness. You can't live in its reality. You can't exist in its reality. Because it's not, it's, it's unknown to you. Understand whether it is positive or negative. Whatever you do not know can't affect how you live. Whatever you know affects how you live. If someone came and told someone that they have cancer, from that time, the news bring a reality of the disease in the hearer. If someone came and told you a million bucks has been deposited into your account, Laura, all of 
a sudden your countenance will change. You start planning right now about the next salon, the next shoe, the next, the next. You will even forget the list you had drawn last month of the things you want to do. If you are not careful, you will discover you have bought what you had not planned to buy. There's a million bucks in my account. You are joking. Your, work, your working style changes. All of a sudden, you are greeting us like this. You start, unajua kuna corona. I must live to eat my, my, my million. <laughs> you, you change. You change. You change how you think. You begin to plan to change how you dress. If we are not careful with you, you will move from Kahao. We discover all of a sudden Joshua is living in loving tone. <laughs> he had no plans of living in loving tone. Why? Because the reality of money in his account has dawned on him. His lifestyle has changed. So the apostle says, I write to you these things that you may know the purpose of knowledge is to enable us to live in the reality, in the knowledge, in the truth that life is at work in us. Praise the Lord. Life is at work in us. And because life is at work in us, everything that come, we come across will make progress. Everything that we come across will do well. Everything that we come across will be built. Everything that will come across will regain stability. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Life is at work in you. Life is at work in me. So everything around us is alive and well producing excellent results and this is the truth. Apart from this, everything else is a lie. Hallelujah. If it is not in life, that life that the Son of God gives, it's a lie. Praise the Lord. I want you to open up your mouth and just begin to pray in tongues right where you are. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Lift up your voice and just pray. In the name of Jesus. Makarabazande de debo zekete boraba shata la daba rimasha karabazande de debo zata karabazanda declare life is at work in you declare life is at work in you in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus ramashata karabazande de debo rimaseke teke debo rabazanta la la bazande rekete boraba shanta karabazanda la laba. Reke teke rebo zanda la laba. Rima sheke de gede bo raba santa la barade. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Rama sheke te bo raba santa. Rima zeke teke de bo raba santa la laba santa. Reke de gede bo rama santa la barakata. Rima sheke te gede bo raba santa la laba zeke de bo. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Life is at work in me. Life is at work in me. Ramashata Karabasanda. I've got the life of God in me. I've got the life of God in me. Ramashata Karabasanda. I live in the reality of this knowledge. I live in the reality of this knowledge. In the name of Jesus. Ramashata Karabasanda. Rimashake take the boat. Rimashata Labarakata Rabba. Rimashake de Gedebo Rabasanda. Rimashake te de Debo. Ramashata Labarakata. Rimashake te Kedebo Rabasanda. Rimashake de Gedebo. Rimashata Labarade. Rimashata Karabasanda. Rimashoto Loko Brahesta Kiba. Rande Soke te Kedeba. Ramashoto Lobo Seke de Gedeba. Rimashata Labarade. Ramashake de Gedebo Rabasanda. Hallelujah, my God. Oh, we give you praise, my God. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we bless your name. We bless your name. Thank you, Jesus. We bless your name. We give you praise. Thank you for your word, Lord, that has come forth with power. By this word, we are transformed. By this word, we are renewed. By this word, we are elevated to a higher level. By this word, we are caused to be productive. In every area of our lives. In the name of Jesus. I thank you Lord. Maybe you are there. And you are not born again. We can't close this broadcast. Without giving you an opportunity to receive Jesus. So right where you are. I want you to pray this prayer after me. Say, thank you, Lord Jesus, for dying for me on the cross. I believe that God raised you from the dead. You are alive. Today, with my mouth, I confess you, Lord and Savior, of my life I receive eternal life I receive eternal life I am born again thank you Jesus for your salvation allow me to pray for you father in the name of Jesus I thank you I bless you thank you for my hearers thank you for them that have prayed this prayer I speak a blessing over their lives. I declare in the authority of the name of Jesus that the name of the Lord is named upon them. By the Spirit of God, they are transferred from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God's dear Son. I transformed. I speak a blessing over your life. You are a success. In everything that you do. In Jesus name. Doors are open. The rivers made quick. And the valleys made plain. And sweet pray. In one accord. Shouldering faith as we pray. Doors are open, the rivers may quake, and the valleys may flame. Miracles happen in His name. All things are possible.
Valleys make plain Miracles happen 